What's up guys, Tim Halston here for another episode of Drag Boss Garage, episode 51. So this episode, what I'm gonna focus on is all I wanna do is measure piston to valve clearance with the clay method using the loaded method, which means that I'm using the actual valve springs, all the valve train, mock it up, turn it over, measure the piston to valve clearance and see where we're at. So just to kind of recap, so we're all on the same page and we can kind of tie this all together. When I initially measure the piston valve clearance with a dial indicator, we're just gonna use rough numbers and measure 54 thousandths on the intake and 94 thousandths on the exhaust. I switched and went to the clay method with the checking springs and it came out to um, 76 thousandths to 78 thousandths on the intake and 106 on the exhaust. Now what I'm gonna do is measure this loaded and put it together with the actual valve spring setup I'm gonna use tighten it down, rotate it over, and measure the piston to valve clearance with the loaded method, which is you're gonna get the most piston to valve clearance utilizing this. And that's my whole point of these video series on measuring piston to valve clearance, is that you might get more cam than you think you could in an engine if you measure it using the loaded method. And I think that's what a lot of fast guys are doing, the super stock racers at least. That's what Rody told me way back in the day. And Darren Morgan confirmed that too. So think about that when you want to try to get every little extra horsepower out of the combination. The risk, interference. So think about that. Let's check it out. Now I already have the head gasket on there. And you know that if you're gonna measure piston to valve clearance, you want a head gasket on there. And it's best if you can get a compressed gasket. Now you don't need the, you're not torquing the whole head on. I just throw on four head bolts in a corner of the cylinder I'm testing. Like I said, make sure that it's on the dowel pins before you go tightening anything down. And like I said, I'm just snugging it down. And for these bolts here, I, I torque them down to 30 pounds just because I don't want them coming loose or pulling on the threads. And you want zero lash. That's what we're putting on. So everything's been the same with all my measurements. And I just snug it up. You can still turn the push rod. And if you're running lash caps, don't forget to put the lash caps on. All right guys, so I got the head on. I have it tightened down with four bolts around the chamber. Push rods are in, adjusted to zero clearance for lash. There's no lash in it. What we're gonna do is turn the motor over and then we're gonna pull the head and we're gonna measure the piston to valve clearance with the loaded method, with the actual springs. This is gonna give you the exact piston to valve clearance compared to a dial indicator, which is gonna give you the least amount of piston to valve clearance. This is taken in consideration push rod deflection and other things with the rocker arm ratio. So let's see what we got. So turn the motor over in direction of rotation. The exhaust valve should open first. There it is. And I have the lash caps also on there. Now we'll do the intake. There we are. Let's pull it back off and see what it looks like. There you go. So you can see how the valves compress the clay. And this was with a loaded method with the regular valve springs. The exhaust looks like it's got plenty of clearance here. The intake, you can see right here how it's tight right around the radial clearance here. But you can see that it's got a good space. So we'll cut that down. We'll measure it. We'll see what we got. 
kind of cut the part where I think it'd be deepest coming right across here. And I have coated pistons and I try not to scratch them, but they get scratched. It doesn't, at this point, I don't really care. I just want to get this thing done. And one thing I can tell you, if you use too much of this modeling clay and you got tight clearances, you're going to force it right down into either the gas ports or the side between the piston and the cylinder wall. So you take your time when you're doing it. Try not to use too much, just use just the right amount. So let's measure the piston valve clearance with a loaded method with the actual springs and see what we have. Looking back at what I've had before, with the exhaust, I had 94 thousandths with a dial indicator, 106 thousandths with the clay using checking springs. Now let's check it with the actual springs. And I'll show you the gauge so you can kind of see it too. I'll have to turn it to you. I don't know if you can see that, but that's 138 thousandths. So let's check it again. The gauge is zeroed. We'll go right to the edge where the radio clearance would be. One hundred and thirty three thousandths. Check it again. Way out at the edge. 130 thousandths. So now with the intake, I had 54 thousandths with a dial indicator, 76 to 78 with checking springs and clay. So let's see what we have now. We'll come right out to the edge here first. Hundred and thirty six thousandths. We'll go in the middle. Hundred and thirty five thousandths. We'll come right out here to the end. That's 149,000, so that seems a little generous, but that's that's what it says. Let's measure it again. One thirty-three. I probably believe that a little bit better. But anyway, you look, you're looking at 130 plus thousands. 138. I'm gonna say it's about 135 on an average. And the secret is you got to make it straight and be nice and easy till it just touches the clay. 138 thousandths. We'll go in the middle aspect. All right, guys, there's my take on measuring piston to valve clearance with a loaded method. So let me give you a synopsis. I measured piston to valve clearance on this motor with three different methods. One was the dial indicator. One was piston to valve clearance using clay method and checking springs. Then again, with the clay method here, with a loaded valve train, meaning I'm using the actual push rods, valve springs, everything, just like it's going to be on the motor. Here's what I surmised. The dial indicator method on this motor, I had 54 thousandths piston to valve clearance. When I switched it to checking springs and measured it with clay method, I got from 54, it went up to 76 thousandths. So that's almost, that's 22 thousandths about, give or take, because remember, nothing's exact. So then I put it all together, like you just saw me, and measured again. Now I'm getting, we're going to use average, probably about 135 thousandths of intake piston to valve clearance because of push rod deflection, the rocker ratio, all that stuff gives you more clearance. 
the dial indicator gives you the least. So if you're good with a dial indicator, you're good. But remember, the closer you are, more quench you get, the bigger cam you got, a little more duration, you're gonna make more power. Now, the difference between the dial indicator and the loaded method is over 80 thousandths. That's some clearance right there. So that's something to keep in mind when you're picking out your next cam or getting new pistons made. Now, on the exhaust, it measured 94 thousandths on the dial indicator method with the checking springs, clay, it came up to 106 thousandths. With the loaded method with clay, I came up to, I'm gonna say 130 to 135, right in that area, because I had a couple that were 129 at one time, then I had 137, 138, average 135 thousandths, it makes it easy. So think about that. With 135 thousandths, I'm picking up another 30 thousandths about in the exhaust piston to valve clearance. So all those things contribute, and that's where you come into making power. If you're gonna build a motor and you want the best and the most you can get, think about every detail, and that includes getting the piston to valve clearance as tight as possible for the best quench. And remember that what you find in the dial indicator is not what it's gonna be in the running motor. Those are things that people don't talk about. Like I said before in the other videos, I got that from Darren Morgan um, on the loaded method and at this point, I'm done making videos. I'm putting this thing back together. I think I covered everything. If you look in the pile back there, I got all the parts to go back together. And I'm putting this back together tonight and tomorrow to get it to the dyno. I'm done messing around with this. It's time to move on to new projects. Get a 950 with this. Dyno, hopefully I can make, be nice to make 780 horsepower. I don't see why I can't if I made 752. Now I have the heads ported intake ported on two different intakes also have the coated pistons coated bearings the molnar rods for the correct ford offset windage tray and like i said before in my other videos i'm thinking about putting on the um, oil line from the front to the back and also the oil filter adapter i think i'm putting this on here before I take it to the dyno, which should be in the next few weeks. So I appreciate you guys stopping by the Drag Boss Garage because we've heard that Cleveland's make power. Now I'm going to show you they make power. Stay tuned.